Uh, the area of a square, the square is like a rectangle. And so when I'm thinking of our, remember our formula sheet of the five basic shapes? A rectangle is just like this. I mean, it's just, a square is a kind of a rectangle. The other thing, the, the difference between a square and a rectangle is all the sides are the same of a square, but it's still like a rectangle. So I'm still going to use a length times width formula. So watch, area equals length times width. Okay, what is the length and the width? Well, I'm just going to use the units of the graph paper itself. Okay, from here to here, from F to G, as I see, one, two, three, four, five units. So five is the length. The width is going to be one, two, three, four, five also. So five times five. So watch this now. The area then is 25. They didn't specify what's being counted. These are just normal units. They could be inches, they could be miles, they could be feet, don't matter. So if they don't specify, we just write the word units squared. And notice, remember this is, the second power means square tiles, and you can actually see them. I'm gonna go ahead and number them. There's 25 square units in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, Right? You could see the square units as I'm writing them in. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 square units. There's the area. That's what area means. How many square units are inside a shape? The two-dimensional flat surface. Let's try the triangle. Look at the triangle here. Let me use an area formula for triangle. Uh, that came from our formula sheet from last week. Triangle is one half the base times the height, right? So watch this. Check it out. So the base and the height, remember, for base and height, I'm looking for perpendicularity, 90 degrees, and I see it right here. So I know this is going to be my height right here, and this is going to be my base, because the base and the height are always meeting at 90 degrees. They're always perpendicular. So, area then, watch this now, is one half the base, let's see, I'm gonna count the base now, from A to C. One, two, three, four units, right? That's the base. The height is gonna be one, two, three units from B to D, rocking and rolling. Question so far. That the base is from A to C, the height is from B to D. Let's see what square units fit inside the triangle now. Watch. So one half times four is the same as so whenever you multiply one half by a number, it's the same as a number divided by two. So four divided by two is two. And then two times three is six. So we have an area, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, there's no ladies today, just gentlemen. Uh, the area is six. Watch this now. Six square units. Six square units. And you can see the square units in here. Let me count them for you. You can actually see the square units inside the triangle. Watch. Let me count them just like I did on the, number, the first one. One, two, three. Notice that. These two make up four. Look at if I were to put those two together, that's a fourth square unit, right? Um, let's see, this one and this one will make the fifth square unit. You can see that, that's like a puzzle. And notice this piece and this little piece right here would make up the six if you could put them together. So you could see the six square units in the triangle itself. That's what I mean by area. Well, not just me, that's what everyone means by area. How many square tiles will fit inside a shape? Give me a second. Any questions on the warm up? Let me give you the game plan. If there's no questions on the warm up, basic area. Uh, you can watch the video later on the warm up, but not that I know. Uh, let me give you the game plan. So, uh, Where is it? Here we go, share screen. 
Where's my class? Here we go. So, can you believe it? We're actually starting credit five today, guys. Today is C51 and C52. We're already in the last credit. I think after today, we only meet five more times and summer's here. I hope some of you guys are going to summer school. I'm not gonna be teaching summer school. I'll be around though, doing planning and stuff. Uh, but we're already here, look at Credit five, wow. Monday, C51, C52. Let's see what C51 says. Man, I don't know if it's my computer, but it says, it says that you're sharing your screen, but it doesn't even show it. It just says Aaron Mungia is trying to speak. Let me check. How about now? Hold on. Now, this is Aaron Mungia has started sharing the screen. He's probably my Wi Fi. He's gonna be honest. Hold up, hold up. The title is Composite Shapes. I'm gonna draw this or just write C video, like I said. Find area. Coffee is good. All right. Uh, Composite shapes. What I mean by composite shapes are shapes that are funky and looking weird and they're made up of, some, of one or more basic other shapes. Here's what I mean. So look at this shape right here. Uh, I could chop it up into like two squares and a rectangle. Two squares at the bottom and a rectangle. Look at this shape. This is like a triangle and then a square. So when I say composite shapes, they're irregular looking shapes, but you can chop them up into more basic shapes that we already know how to find the area. Or how about this one? Look at this one. Now, by the way, this is a, a challenge problem I'll leave, let you guys have. If you don't want to do any of my assignments, do this one problem and I'll count it as two, two assignments. You could do this, but I'll, I'll leave this up later. It's my challenge problem for the week. Um, but look at this shape. This would be a rectangle and half a circle. That's what I mean by composite shapes. Shapes that can be chopped up into more basic shapes, right? And it's the only ones I have. I think they have another one here. Look at this one. This is a square and half a circle. This looks like a key for a, on a basketball court, free throw line. That's what I mean by composite shapes, just shapes that are made up of more basic other shapes. Okay. Um, so let's find the area of this puppy. Okay, here we go. So what I'm gonna do, my game plan is just to do what I just did. I just chopped it up into, into a rectangle, right? This red, I'm gonna just, this is a red rectangle here. And these two little squares here, look at. I'll put them in blue. Okay, there's my game plan. I'll find the area of each, add them all up, and I'm done. So let's find the area of the rectangle first. The area of a rectangle, we already know from our, our formula sheet from last week, is length times width. I showed you it uh, for, for warm up, right? So, What is the length? Hell, what would be the length of this red rectangle right here? That's the question mark. From here to here is how long? Somebody help me think that through. Let me erase some of my markings. Maybe that'll help. So right now, I'm focusing in on this rectangle right here. I need the length though, right here, from there to there. Oh, I know it. Hit it, give it to me, hit it. Seven. Seven, so let's see, your logic was from here to here is three. So that's three, very nice. How about right here and right here, Ramos? What you get? That's two and two. Nice, because look at from here to here is two meters, and here, look at this is a, this is one hash mark. Whenever you have these little hash marks, 
that's communicating that they're the same size. This has one hash mark, that's one hash mark. That means they're all two, two, two meters. So that means this is two also. Very nice, Ramos. So I got two, three is five, and then two more is seven. So the, air, the length of, that, of this rectangle then is seven. Very nice. How about the width? Someone besides the Ramos. How about from here to here? I'll come back to you Ramos since no one gets it, but can someone give me the width of the rectangle? I know from here to here is five, but I want from there to there. Someone besides Ramos. Hold up Ramos. I got you. Can someone give me the width? Take your time. Three. What's your logic, Katarina? Thank you. Very nice. Beautiful logic. That's beautiful logic. This is five. I'll take away two. This has to be three. Thank you. There's my width. Rocking and rolling. Or rolling and rocking. One of the two. Let's do this. The area then is going to be 21. Watch this now. 21 chickens, horses, or termites. Well, meters, right? And they're going to be square meters inside. So 21 square meters is my area. Nice. Okay, so far so good. So I got this top rectangle is 21 square meters. We're done with the top rectangle. Now I'm going to find the area of this square, area of this square, and then add up all of it together, and we're rocking and rolling. So this is a this is this square is like a type of rectangle. So I'm going to do the length times width again. Remember, a square is a rectangle. It's just a very special rectangle where all the sides are the same, but it's still a rectangle. So the length is two. Then watch this now. The length is two. The width is also two. So two times two. The area then is four square meters. Square meters. And this one's a replica. That's another four square meters. So the total area then of this irregular composite shape is going to be 21 plus 4 plus 4. I want to say that's 29 square meters if my coffee is kicked in. So the total area is 20, 21, 4, and 4 is 29. Square meters. Very nice. Now, what I want you to uh, understand is that that's one game plan. There's other game plans to find the area of this. In other words, let me give you an alternative game plan. Let me give you an alternative game plan. So we're, we're still in example one. But an alternative game plan was you could have went this way, watch. You could have chopped it up into this rec three rectangles like this and then found the area of each one. You could have went that route. Or, or, watch this. This one might freak you out. You could have went this way, watch. Bring it down over here so I have more room. Um, you could have went this route. You could have you could have just went. Look at you know what? I'm gonna figure out the area of the whole thing, and then subtract this white area from the whole thing. Subtract that from the area of everything. That's another game plan. Because this this white area is an empty spot. It's like a cavity, empty cavity, right? So I. I could pretend everything's gray and just find the area of the whole rectangle and then subtract this white area from everything, I would get 29. Let me show you. Length is 7. We know that already. The width is 5, right? So the area of the whole shemek, the whole thing is going to be 7 times 5, length times width, which is going to be, watch, 35 square meters. 
But now let me subtract the area of this empty white rectangle right there from the 35 square meters. So this is a three by two rectangle. That's how rectangles in the real world, like you do construction, you go to Home Depot, give me a four by two, two by four, a five by six. Rectangles are always described by their length and width. So this would be a three by two rectangle. So let me find the area of that rectangle. That's three times two. That's six square meters. So this empty rectangle, ladies and gentlemen, is six square meters. So I'm gonna subtract six square meters from the 35, look at, and lo and behold, I get a 29, see. So there's different game plans. All that to say there's different game plans. You, you pick the game plan you, you're most comfortable with. That's example one. Let's try a couple more. Here we go. All right, example two, please. We're gonna find the area again. All right, we have a composite shape again. This one is made up, watch this now, right? It's made up of a, it's not really a square, huh? Because this, the width is 24 and the length is 28. So this is made up of a rectangle in blue, right? And then I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna highlight the triangle in green. Okay, so I'm gonna find the area of the triangle, find the area of the rectangle, add them up, we're rocking and rolling. Simple as that, you guys. This is not, this is a very easy lesson for this, this Monday. Come on. Uh, so, here we go. Let's do the, let's do the area of the triangle first, okay? So I'm looking at my, um, Remember our formula table from last week? Area of a triangle is one half base times height. Nice. So the area then, watch this now, one half the base times the height. Okay, just focusing in on, don't worry about the, the rectangle right now, just looking at the, the triangle. Here's the base, there's the height, because look, it's perpendicular. So the area then is going to be one half the base is, look at the same as this size, that's 28 feet. The base is 28. Uh, what's going to be the height? L. I need the height of that triangle. Anybody? So I need, I need right here, from there to there. We already know that this is 28. I need the- Wait, we're saying it's 36 feet. Okay, good. So three, 36 feet is from here to there. Good question. From the top of the, of the triangle to the... Oh, okay. Oh, never, never mind. I see what you mean. So this in black, what I'm highlighting in black is 36 feet. Oh, so that means the triangle? That means the... Oh, okay. I got it. So I need, I need this right now. Right there, what you're looking for, that's going to be... Just from here to here. The height of the triangle itself only. Hell. That's 12. How'd you get 12, Ramos? Uh, I subtracted 36 minus 24 feet. Thank you. Look at This is 24 feet, and from here to here is 36, right? So 36 minus the 24 is going to give us what's left over from here to here, which would be 12. 36 minus 24 is gonna be 12, very nice. So the height then is 12 feet. 
I'll put that in my formula. So we're going to have to use logic here. We're logical creatures. We're log logical beings. That's what differentiates us from all the animals. We use logic. There's something very special with our minds that God gave us that distinguishes us from all animals. So I'm going to just go to multiply the the one half the base and the height. So one half times 28 is the same as 28 divided by two. That's going to be uh, 14 if my coffee is kicked in. Right? 20 divided by 2 is 14. Okay, and then 14 times 12. Put my calculator here. 14 times 12 is 168. 168, in this case, square feet. Right? Because they specified what we're measuring. And okay, so that's just a triangle. Let's not get all happy because we're not done yet. All we found out is the area of the triangle on top. Okay, it's not time to celebrate yet. We gotta find the area of this, the, the rectangle now. Cool. The area then is gonna be Length times width of a rectangle. Nice. That rectangle in blue, I just highlighted it in blue. The length is a longer side, so it's going to be 28. The width is always a shorter side. That's like the rule of thumb. How do you know what the length and the width are? Just the length is longer. L for L. Longer is the length. So 28 is the length. The width is 24. And let me get my calculator again. 28 times 24. Six hundred seventy-two square feet. Okay? That's the rectangle. So let's go ahead and take the rectangle and add it with the triangle, right? We're going to add them both up and we're rocking and rolling. So 168 plus 672, the triangle plus the rectangle. 168 plus 672. 840. Nice. The total area is 840 square feet. That's the whole thing. The triangle and the rectangle. Questions on example two. We're going to do one more and we're done. You guys are doing good for a Monday. I love it. Last example. This is example three at one. I'll give you about a minute to copy this last one. We'll do it together. All right, this is a composite shape. We have half a circle, look at half a circle here of area right there. I'm highlighting black. And then we have another square or rectangle, same thing. Remember our square is just a, a special kind of rectangle, just all the sides the same. Notice they, these all have one hash mark, which is telling us it's communicating to us that all these are five units. Even right here. Look at that. So, the game plan. Let's find the area of the circle first in black. And then we'll find the area of the, the, the square in blue. Add them up and we're, we're in business. We're in big business. Area of a circle. Let me consult my area formula sheet. The area of a circle, there we go, is pi times the radius squared. Remember, we're going to replace pi with 3.14. Now, I'll go over why it's 3.14 on uh, Thursday. 
Okay? But there's our formula, pi times the radius squared. Just do it. Area is pi times the radius squared. All right. Um, but notice, this is if we had a whole circle. Right? We don't have a whole circle. We have half a circle. So look what I'm going to do. The area that is pi times the radius squared, I'm going to divide this puppy by 2. Because all we're dealing with is half a circle. Think of the logic. Again, we're, we're, we're homo sapiens. We're human beings. We have logic. I don't see a whole circle there of area. I see a half a circle. That's why I'm taking the formula and I'm chopping that puppy in half. Let's rock and roll. Question so far. Area then is 3.14. The radius, uh-oh. I know from here to here is 5, so I need the radius is from here to there. I need half of 5 for the radius, don't I? Half of 5, I want to say is 2.5. If my copy is kicked in. Right? We need the radius of the circle, which is half the diameter. So 5 is the diameter of the circle. We need the radius. So half of 5 is 2.5. Check that out, you guys. 2.5 to the second power. All divided by 2. Because again, we're only dealing with half a circle. Question so far. The rest is calculator button pushing. You gotta be kidding me, it's so easy. Let me get my calculator. Hold. Junior high school, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. We gotta do the exponent first. Exponent comes before anything. I got in other words, I gotta do 2.5 to the second power. Okay, here we go. 2.5 times 2.5. I got 6.25. So here we go, watch. Keep it black here for now. 3.14 times 6.25, all divided by 2. All right, on my calculator, 3.14. I'm going to do the, the numerator right now. So 3.14 times 6.25, 3.14 times 6.25, I get a, a 19. Welcome, Miss Garcia. We're just taking notes on the last example. Get some paper out. You can watch the video after I post it right now. So 19.625 divided by 2. Again, I'm just using my calculator now. 19.625 divided by 2. Because remember, the division by 2 is because we're only dealing with half a circle up here, you guys, of area. That's half a circle. So I'm chopping that puppy in half. I get, here we go. The area of half the circle now is 9. Point, I'm going to run the nearest tenth, the first decimal, so 9.8 square units. Nice. Okay. So all this area of the half a circle now, so this right here, the half a circle. Let me go to, let me color it in. What color in pink? How about that? So all this is uh, six square units. No, no, nine point eight. Is it nine point eight? Yeah, nine point eight square units. Nine point eight square units. We're done with half the circle. That's the toughest battle. Because the, the square, the square is a cakewalk. Area of a square is just an area of a rectangle. The length and width. Let's multiply those puppies. And the length and width are the same on a square. So 5 times 5. You've got to be kidding me. So it's 25 square units. And we're done. There's a rectangle. Here's a half circle. Let's add those puppies up. 25 is a rectangle, 9.8 is a half circle, and we're done. So let's see, 25 plus 
9.8. The area then, ladies and gentlemen, is 34. 0.8. Look at they didn't specify in feet or yards, miles, anything, so we're going to put units, square units. 0.8. 